For the past couple of years, OpenAI's Cortex GPT-3 and other language models have been around, and their ability to write code is well known. But I always thought they were designed to help with coding, not do the coding for us, because they just seemed unreal to me. When GPT-4 was launched, and they showed in the demo how a wireframe could be converted into an actual program, my mind was blown. There were loads of Twitter demos showing people creating all sorts of things. I decided to give it a spin. With the main question being, can we use these models in real-world scenario instead of just flashy demos that impress us but offer little else? So I set out to create a web script. Now I'm not particularly technical, but having previously worked as a product manager, I understood the building blocks, but not much more than that. For some, it might seem like a simple application, but instead of focusing on the problem itself, let's consider for a moment the leap it allowed me to make. At the beginning, all I knew was that I wanted to create a web crawler, but I had no idea what a web crawler was and how it worked. As I slowly discovered things, I decided on a problem statement, which was to create a website which lists all the companies that are valued at more than a billion dollars, their valuation, their categories which they are in, what they do, and what their website link is. For someone who knows their way around code, this might be an easy to moderate problem. But it would definitely require some digging, debugging, and figuring things out. I bet no one can imagine a non-coder being able to do this in one sitting. As you might have guessed from the title, I managed to do this, and I would like to show you what the final solution looks like. The website not only looks good, but is also responsive. When you hover over any block, you can click and be taken to the company's website, see its valuation. The country it is from and what it does. I managed to achieve all of this, going from zero knowledge of web crawlers to building and deploying the website in about three hours. I've added a link to the website in the description below, so you can take a look and see it for yourself. I would like to share four key observations I made while trying to build a web scraper from scratch using OpenAI GPT-4. But before that, let me give you a quick rundown of the steps required in building this project. After defining the problem statement, GPT-4 suggested where I could find the data. Once I finalized the source, GPT-4 scraped the data for me. As the data was missing website information, GPT-4 helped fetch that data from different search engines. Then I used GPT-4 to scrape the header info of these websites. Finally, I instructed the AI to build a UI where we could display this information. GPT-4 is incredibly powerful. It's like having an excellent programmer at your fingertips. I had no doubts about AI being able to write code, but this experience completely erased any lingering skepticism that I had. Working with GPT-4 felt like having access to a top-notch programmer whenever I needed one. When I started, I had no idea how a web scraper worked. I asked GPT-4 to explain what it was and the steps involved, and it provided an incredibly detailed response. As I worked through different problems, I asked GPT-4 many questions, some of which might seem silly. Like how to find a common class in a file or how to run code on Replit. GPT-4 answered all of my questions in great detail. GPT-4 even suggested websites where I could find the necessary links, and then also provided the scripts which I could use to scrape this information. I ran everything on Replit to avoid the hassle of setting up and managing a local environment. And as a side note, Replit is amazing. Whenever Replit produced an error, I entered it back into GPT-4, and it told me how to fix the issue. I got stuck fetching website links because DuckDuckGo was returning Wikipedia links instead of the actual websites. But GPT-4 helped me explore various different solutions, ranging from Google API, Bing API, or DuckDuckGo scraping. The takeaway here is that GPT-4 is incredibly competent at writing code, at least for the task I tried it on. Sure, it has limitations and might not be able to handle every problem, but that's true for human developers as well. The second takeaway for me is the fact that you have to solve the problem yourself, and AI will do the work for you. It's naive to think that you only need to state the problem and it will be instantly solved. While AI writes the code, I had to solve the problem. From defining the problem to extracting the specific problem statement, I worked with the help of AI to break it down into separate steps and debug any errors. For instance, when I wasn't getting the website links, I figured out solutions like adding official website as a suffix to the company name in the search query. I tried different solutions to tackle problems at one point. I tried using Selenium, DuckDuckGo, Google, and finally succeeded with Bing API. Along the way, I refined the problems, making links clickable and providing instructions of what the AI should use as reference. 
Remember, you need to break the problems down into smaller bits to make it manageable for the AI to work on it. GPT-4 makes a lot of errors, but can also understand the mistakes. We might expect a system to be 100% accurate all the time. But while working with GPT-4, I encountered various issues. But by simply passing the errors back to it, it was able to correct the mistakes. In cases where APIs were failing, the error helped the AI find different solutions and identify the problem. Whenever the output wasn't intended, wasn't as intended, GPT-4 corrected the response. It made mistakes for various different reasons that I would not go into right now. However, it was able to rectify them. People often cherry pick these errors to showcase the limitations of these models, but that's far from the truth. GPT-4 acts as a competence multiplier. It takes your current competence and amplifies it. If you're good at writing code, it can help you leverage your potential tenfold. The same goes for writing or any other skill for that matter. In my case, since I did not know anything about programming, GPT-4 turned me into a medium to a good programmer with just a click of a button. As for the future, the fundamentals of software remain the same. But the way software is built is changing. The ability to code a website using AI has improved. But you still need to use cloud hosting providers, cloud fire protection and Google login for authentication and so many different third parties. AI still cannot build system for itself as it cannot interact with different platforms. For example, it cannot run Replit on its own. However, if AI could access Replit, it could potentially do everything that I was doing and replacing the kind of actions that I was making. Although images are not yet available for everyone, it would be a game changer once they are. You could describe an error and the AI would correct it. Or you could show the kind of websites you want and it would create it for you. This illustrates the immense potential of AI in the future. AI cannot solve problems for you and it will never will be able to solve it. It will always have complexity limit beyond which it cannot produce results. But that ceiling will continue to rise with each new version. To fully understand the power and potential of AI, I love these two analogies that describe what AI is right now. First, think of AI as a tool that increases productivity by 10 times. Similar to how a bike is more efficient than walking, and driving is more efficient than biking. Using AI would supercharge our abilities, enabling us to tackle much more complex problems and keep progressing. And the second analogy that can explain what AI is to think about it as having access to a genius. But the only way you can communicate with them is through a piece of paper. Even though the genius can answer everything and anything that is there in this world, the quality of the response would depend on the person who is asking the question. Seeing these tools in real life makes me extremely excited about the future we are heading towards and the potential they unlock. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. I'll see you in the next one.